What's up, family? All right, y'all seen him. Dudes jump out there, commit a crime, then post their ill-gotten gains online. Next thing you know, the police snatch up their behind, lock them up in jail and give them that time. <laughs> it goes like this, folks. Back in his coke feud heyday, Gustavo Falcon, now 55, was famous for splashing around $100 bills. He and his high-flying collaborators, known as the Cocaine Cowboys, operated out of South Florida and generated billions of dollars in ill-gotten gains. Not shy by spending, they raced around in speedboats, attended galas and designer tuxedos, squired the hottest girls, and resided in waterfront mansions. Considering his flashy past, it's ironic that Falcon, the latest cowboy to be nailed, was caught living a toned down lifestyle under an assumed name. When authorities arrested him on Wednesday, Falcon wasn't piloting a private jet or cruising in a luxury yacht. He was on a bicycle ride with his wife in a landlocked town of Kissimmee, Florida, and he went quietly. It's not exactly a headline grabbing blaze of glory, but living a quiet life did help Falcon manage to elude capture for 26 years. In fact, others in the drug trade looking to stay out of jail could stand to take a lesson and land low on the land. Dealers may be smart about organizing criminal enterprises, but some are absolutely dopey when it comes to keeping themselves off the radar of law enforcement agencies. Rule number one might be to stay off of social media with braggy photos, especially ones that depict you bathing in a tub full of money leaning on your sports car while flipping the bird and adorning the stick shift of said car with more than $100,000 worth of shiny wrist washes. That was what British drug peddler Levi Watson chose to do, much to the excitement of his 4,500 Instagram followers. Presumably, his online fans included law enforcement personnel. He was busted last year and sentenced to seven years in the joint. It has been reported that the DEA have used Instagram postings to bust more than 350 drug dealers. In the Oregon town of Scapoose, a, a knucklehead high schooler by the name of Brayton Garza was made to stay late after class while law enforcers raided a home loaded with the weed he sold. According to the Oregonian, a release from the Scapoose Police Department says that the warrant was the result of information they gathered proving Gaza was selling marijuana over Snapchat and then posting pictures of himself with large amounts of cash on Instagram. <laughs> the clincher for the young Gaza, an Instagram photo of him in the backseat of a car grinning madly and fanning out a bunch of hundreds. Ostentatious as Gaza is, the teen is outdone by a dealer who posted on Instagram under the name Narco Official. <laughs> on that feed, currently not active, you'll find tigers, giant guns, Lamborghinis, and near-naked girls, and often two or more of those elements in one photo. However, while some of his arms are gold and shiny, none are bejeweled. That honor goes to a drug mover called Captain Anthrax. No doubt, if these guys keep this work up and they keep their penchant for posting on social media, the ass is going to jail. I mean, I don't understand this type of mentality. I never wanted to be like that badly where I would incriminate myself. I would incriminate myself. I never wanted to be like that badly. This culture is of biblical proportions. I mean, posting your ill-gotten gains online for the world to see. If that ain't some telling on yourself shit, I don't know what it is. I mean, what the hell has the world come to? Now, 
every time I think about the drug trade or you know, really any type of criminal element, I cannot get past the concept of how many people get paid off a of criminal activity. Think about it. And this is why I think that cops and judges and lawyers, all of them, you should be more kind to criminals because criminals pay your salary. Real talk, man, think about it. You gotta have crime, all of these organizations to work. Otherwise you wouldn't need them. You know how the, there's hundreds of thousands of people that get paid off the criminal element. They get paid off criminals from the judicial, cops, lawyers, probation officers, social workers, prison workers, prison owners, the prison builders, prison providers. There are hundreds of millions of people that get paid off of criminals. Now, I ain't trying to big up no criminal because, especially a drug dealer, because let me tell you something, man. In 2017, if you're dealing drugs, you got to consider yourself one of the biggest fools in the world, especially if you're dealing drugs in the U.S. Now, you see where that dude, uh, Watson, Levi Watson, in, in, um, in where was he from? Uh, he was from Britain, I think. But yeah, Britain. Now, you see why that guy, that guy got seven years and he was making millions. That wouldn't have happened in the U.S. <laughs> you know, unless you was the, the actual absolute drug lord of all lords and you wasn't black and you snitched on some people. You ain't getting no seven years. Yeah, it's going to get a life sentence in the U.S. But the point is, they're giving out a whole lot of time for drugs and they don't have to catch you with it. Back in the day, the good old days, they used to have to, it was a cat, cat and mouse, mouse game. They'd have to catch you with the mark money. They sell you some dope. Uh, you sell them some dope and they mark the money. They come back, make the bus, show the mark money. Yeah, gotcha. Now, all they need is somebody to point and say, him, him, her, and your ass is gone for life. You gone. Putting that stuff, putting that property in your mama name don't work no more. Putting that property in your girl name don't work no more. That, that's out. Because the first thing they're going to do when somebody point at you, they are going to look up your criminal history, first and foremost. They're going to look up your record and see what's on it. Next thing they're going to do is they're going to pull your financials. They're going to look at your bank account. They're going to look at every single thing that you own or they think that you own. And they're going to follow the trail. They're going to follow the paper trail. If you got that Rolls Royce in your mama name and your mama can't show her taxes, where she can afford that Rolls Royce and where she actually bought that Rolls Royce, your mama going to jail. If you put that house in your girl name, and you women need to hear this too, if you put that house in your girl name and they come and they look at that record, those records and they see your girl name on that house, they're going to ask your girl, how did she buy that house? Where did the money come from? Oh, um, uh, I saved my money. Oh, no, 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 no. You saved it? You didn't report that. We, no, no, we, we ain't playing that save shit. Uh, how can you afford this house? This is a half a million dollar house. You got a $25,000 a year job at Burger King. How in the hell can you afford this house? Baby going to jail. She going to jail. And before she go to jail, she going to tell. Because if y'all got any kids together, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to threaten her with those kids. They're going to say, man, so you really going to go down for this guy? 
and he puts your life in jeopardy, he puts your child's life in jeopardy, you really going to go down for him? You know how much time you can get? You know how old your daughter going to be when you get out of jail? And she's going to start singing, singing. They're going to ask her what she got. She's going to say, I got beans, green, potatoes, man. <laughs> Y'all get my point. I'm, I mean, I'm laughing and shit, but this is serious, man. You don't want to do that shit, man, because they getting people on ghost charges. They don't need to see you with the dope. They don't need to catch you with the dope. They don't need to find any mark money. They don't need none of that stuff. All they need is somebody to point at you, and they're going to open up an investigation. And from there, it's on. Whatever you got, you can't prove that. With taxes and a, and a legitimate business, a legitimate hustle, a legitimate job, your ass is gone for a long, 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 long time. So if I were you, you know, I, if I get out while I'm ahead, and I don't give a damn if, if, if being ahead mean that I, I'm, I'm ahead by a dollar, I'd get the hell up out of that game. But these dudes today, I don't understand where they come from, who the hell breeding these dudes like who they these dudes who they dad is or who the hell are they daddies like somebody ain't taught them jack i mean they may as well go you may as well go to trial get up on the stand and even without any evidence let's assume that they didn't have evidence but somebody accused you of something they had no evidence that's like you going up on the stand and saying well yeah i know you don't have any evidence but Here's the pictures. Look at me. This is all the stuff I bought with the money. Oh, and, and by, by the way, this is some of the things, the items that I stole. It's crazy, man. But people are getting paid by, a lot of people are getting paid and they're earning a living off these drug dealers. And so it ain't like they really wanted to stop. So some of y'all get mad when y'all see drug dealers and all that stuff. Y'all see the ill-gotten gains. Y'all get mad and y'all be like, lock them up. Y'all think y'all think law enforcement is really doing a great service. Oh, they locking up the drug dealers. They're locking up the drug dealers. Let me tell you something, man. They ain't going to never finish locking up the drug dealers. For every one drug dealer they lock up, they got a thousand waiting to take his place. They're never going to get a handle on that, ever. They're never going to stop that unless they legalize all of that shit. That's the only way. Everything else is just a game, they're a game that they're playing with the public to make y'all feel safe, make you feel like your taxes are going toward a worthy cause. But it's not. It's one big scam. It's a hustle. That's all it is. And they're not out there helping you. They're helping themselves. So this, this whole idea about um, being tough on crime, man. They need crime. Don't be, don't be fooled. They need crime to get paid. They need crime to get them votes. Crime ain't never going down. If they if they ever put out a figure saying crime went down in this area, that area, man, it's going right back up in the next few months, next year, because they got to meet those quotas. Remember this. America, the police, the judicial system, the cops, you know, I said cops, but uh, but the social workers, the, the prisons, the people that work in the prisons, the jailers, all of them, the judges, man, prosecutors, all of them, man, they all need criminals. And crime is going to continue to go up. They get paid when crime go up, not down. No more talk.